the Facebook group. And if you want to share it on your thing, you can then share, do a watch party, whatever it's called. It takes a few minutes to appear in the group because of the lag with the stream. You need to check this Facebook uh, thing with Tony Robbins is incredible. Okay, we're live. We're live. Do you see it in the Facebook group? Can I, I can't hear you. Can I hear you? Where'd you go? Oh, wait, wait, wait. There I am. Okay, good. You somehow mute. Okay, we are live. 11.58, so we are going to start at 12. Hi, guys. We are live on StreamYard. Uh, please, guys, know that we cannot see your direct comments. I see it here on StreamYard. But um, if you want, mention your name so we could do that. And I don't think Anne can see the comments. Oh, Anne, you might be able to see it in the group. But if you want me to reference you by name, feel free to mention your name, or you can go to StreamYard.com forward slash Facebook, and you can allow StreamYard to, you know, because Facebook does all this privacy stuff. They just want to protect your name. But don't worry about it. We will definitely see the comments. But again, if you are not approved by StreamYard, I can't reference you by name. And Dector is in the house. We will be going live in one minute. And Dector is hot. Hot? Why? I took the dog out for a walk. Holy cow. Are you wearing contacts today? Uh, yeah. I, I, I love it. Really? I wear most of the time. Well, you do. I, I usually see you with glasses. <laughs> yeah. So I'm doing the Tony Robbins comeback challenge, which I highly recommend anyone who's on here early. Theodora is here. She says, hi, girls. I'm Theodora. She is. Can you see the comments Anne, or not at all in, in the Facebook group? You can't see it. So I guess StreamYard, I wonder if StreamYard doesn't, uh, yeah, you're right. It takes away the comments in the Facebook group. Interesting. Okay. Uh, Theodora is from Greece. Isn't that cool? Greece. One of my, one of my um, bucket list places to go, Santorini, never have been and have to go. That so I had, I had somebody on the group say we should do a retreat in Greece. So Theodora offered her home. Wow. But I said, as long as there's Arak and Greek salad. <laughs> Lots of feta cheese, right? Yes. Okay, guys, let's start. It is 12 o'clock. I am very passionate about having integrity with time. I believe that a person who commits to their development commits to time and showing up, except when there's technical difficulties. That's when Anne and I get the, get the, get the hall pass. So anyway, I'm Revy Goldwasser, founder of the Fearless Woman Tribe, and tell tell people who you are, the the, the fabulous Anne Dector. Go for it. I am Anne Shoshana Dector, founder of Live the Life That Lights You Up. I am a spiritual mentor. I'm a coach, an author, a teacher, a speaker, and I work with women who ha are transitioning after divorce, life change because they really, at this stage of their life, realize that they want to live the life that lights them up, their purpose, their passion, their mission. It's time. So that's, and I have major stories of how I got to that place. So that's why. Yeah. That's, yeah. why that's exactly why I love Anne. And as I bring other guests into it, I think it's important to bring women that are like-minded, women that have gone through divorce. Now, Anne, just so you know, there are now some women that are coming to the group. You know, my big funnel is TikTok. And there are women that come to the group that are still married. You know, these are women that are still married, that are contemplating divorce. Some of them are separated. Some of them are still married, but in therapy. And, you know, I see that obviously in the list of questions. So, you know, I'm always mindful to that because that's still part of the whole transformation, so to speak. So just so, you know, we're aware of the, the tribe is not just divorced women. It's also women that are married and or you know, separated and still contemplating to go back or not. Yeah, so it's, we're, it's important. What, what weren't we there as well, really? Didn't yes. we sit and stew in our own crap for it years? Was, it we was so hard. We were there. It's part you know, of the process. Some women get through it. I mean, some women are able to go through therapy and really rebuild and recover and have their breakthrough. And some women go through all that and they don't. But I, I think the lesson from that, I'm sure you agree, Anne, is that 
we still have to make sure we're putting the effort into making the marriage work because once we divorce, we don't want to regret it. Like five, six years later, we don't want to go back and say, shoot, did I try hard enough? Like, what do you think about that? Well, not only do we not want to regret it, we also don't want to repeat the same pattern over again. And what we see typically is that when women remarry, if they're not doing this work, if they're not understanding the things that didn't work in this one relationship and also personally what wasn't working for them because we don't we don't put the blame on the mate the mate is just an opportunity a mirror for us to see where we need to grow and transform stop let's repeat that that was so good you got to say it again can you say it again yeah the mate is just an opportunity for us to see a mirror to see where we need to grow and transform so for example in my marriage my ex-husband was a mirror for me to see where I was being a doormat, how I was a doormat, how I was showing up. How did I finally get to that realization? Is because once a person shits on you enough, you realize, well, why? What, what is it about me that is allowing another human being to stomp on me? Perfect words. Because we allowed it. I love that. I think that's very important for women to understand that because sometimes we have the blame game, right? It's him, him, him. But the the transformation into a true fearless woman is when you're strong enough. It's not for everyone, right? When you're in the heat of divorce, sometimes you're still angry and you do blame. But the true transformation, and you 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 said it perfectly. Why did we allow this to happen? And that's why that's what we need to learn. It's, um, and it takes time and it takes enough being dumped on until you finally wake up one day and you say, enough, I want something different. How, how did you, how long did it take you to kind of come to terms with that and really feel good that you wouldn't repeat that pattern and attract a man like your husband? So here's the thing. I, and this is really a fine nuance, if you will. Okay. You know you're ready to move on from a destructive relationship when your opportunity, i.e. your ex or soon-to-be ex, no longer has the power to affect you. Your buttons no longer get pushed. You feel dead inside. Like basically that this relationship, this phase of your life happened but you're not attached to it. You're like outside of your body, looking down, going, hmm, interesting. When you can get to that place, that's when you know you are never going to repeat this pattern over again. Now, that's the nuance and that's the goal is because when people do this rebound stuff where they start dating too early, it's, it's, it's another way, another form of distraction. And we don't want to distract. We want to learn and grow. We want to take this time, this opportunity. You see, women need to understand that a divorce is not just getting rid of baggage, a person. Divorce, if done right, is actually one of what we call in spiritual Judaism a mitzvot, um, a given, something that you are allowed to do. It's part of your growth and transformation. Why? Again, it's not about getting rid of a person. It's about using this person as an opportunity and a mirror to take yourself to the next level, to grow and transform, because that is our purpose and our birthright and our destiny, is to grow and transform. A divorce is just another mechanism, another way through which we accomplish that goal. Well, it's, that was a mouthful, Revy. That was no, mouthful. That, no, that's, but that's exactly it. And But... It doesn't, like, there's women here that have been divorced for a long time that probably see that. Some of them don't. But I think what happens, women that are married and, co like, thinking, should I get a divorce? Is it a, is it a, does this make sense? Like, it's not just about the divorce. <laughs> Getting a divorce is just the beginning, actually. Just the it's beginning. <laughs> just the beginning. It's just the beginning. I'm in that Tony Robbins of, uh, a Facebook challenge and this one woman commented on a post that I made and she said, I went into a tailspin. Like that's what happens. We think a divorce is our way out. Yeah. It's our way out of the marriage, 
but it's just opening the door into you figuring out what the hell is going on with you and why this crap happened to you. Exactly. So getting to that place of uh, zero feeling, there's a concept I love to teach in my practice called pass the salt. Okay. Pass the salt. So you get to this place where let's say you're going out for dinner. Not that any of us are really going out for dinner these days. Right. And oh. Right. Like I, I'm, I'm almost like looking forward to the time when I can go and say, could you please pass the salt? Oh, so, right. so when you ask someone to pass the salt, is there any emotion or heat attached to that request? No, pass the salt. So you know that your tikkun, what you needed to fix in this relationship is done. The fixing is done when you're in a place of past the salt where the old buttons don't get a don't trigger you. They don't trigger you anymore. It's done. It's dead. It's over. It's put to bed. That's past really, really bed. good. Now I did not, it took me, it was three years. I, I knew three years before that I wanted to leave the relationship, but I couldn't get to the place of past the salt for three years. So I kept working on myself and working on myself. And no matter what happened, I kept standing for myself. And we, we went through a lot. We battled and battled and battled. But I knew that I had to stand for myself, that that was my tikkun, the thing. That I was the umph, the, the umph that you had to do was to stand up. That was the what you because you weren't doing that before. No, I was a doormat. Why do you think you weren't doing it before? What, what do you think? Why do you think you allowed that to happen in your life when you were married to him? You know, you, you look back on your, your childhood. There's such a thing as um, previous lifetimes, things that happen in previous lifetimes that you don't fix, that you bring with you into current lifetimes. So not that I'm aware of what they were or weren't, but I'm sure that played a part. But also growing up, I was pretty, I was a pretty quiet person. I was pretty, pretty passive, pretty, you know, and you, you get into a marriage with a person who my ex-husband still is very strong to this day. And maybe there was something about him that attracted me like, hey, I want to be like that. You know, I want to be strong and I want to be outspoken and I want to speak my mind and I want to have confidence. So you know, maybe I attracted someone to me who I needed to help push those buttons because unfortunately, ladies, no pain, no gain. We don't grow and transform, wake up one day and just say, hmm, I'm in the mood to grow and transform today. Let's have a grow and transform party. <laughs> Let's go purposely hurt ourselves. So right. we can Let's go <laughs> put our finger in the water today, right? Yes, it's no pain, no gain. So it's like maybe I knew I needed to attract someone to me who was going to push my buttons in a way that I would wake up. That's, so, uh, that's so good. That's true. That's I true. Mean, and he did it. Every single day of our 13 years together, push, 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 until I finally said, hmm, I've learned enough from you. Thank you very much. I'm going to take those lessons that I've learned and now I'm going to use them to move forward into the life that I want. I love that. By the way, Lisa Pritt joined us. I love her. She's amazing. She says she's late. It's okay, girlfriend. I'm glad you're here. And somebody else said, hello, ladies. We're saying hi. I don't know who it is. I'm sorry. I don't see your name here on StreamYard. You know, I often say, and that um, I love what you said about that. Cause it's so true. Like when we're young and we're in our twenties, a lot of us got married in our twenties you know, and then after 10, 15, 20 years, we leave. So, you know, we're in our, most of us are probably in our forties, thirties, forties, and some even fifties. And I, that's exactly true. What happens? We latch, we might have a weakness. I don't even like using that word, but perhaps a characteristic of value and attribute, et cetera, that, that we want to strengthen. So we see that in a partner, even sometimes a friend, wouldn't you say sometimes we attract that just oh. in friends? It's not just a spouse, right? Oh my God. It's just, it's just, this is, this is the way the world works. So there's so many people I have attracted into my life, you know, and it's really funny now that I am a little older and a little wiser, 
um, there are many women who have come back into my world who I wanted to be close to and connect with. And in my, my mind, they were very strong women. They were very accomplished and very strong women. But I couldn't, I couldn't meet them on their level play on their playing field because I just wasn't there yet myself. But now they're coming back into my life. So the point is, is that we look at people not as you're doing it to me, you're hurting me. We look at people as a mirror and reflections and opportunities to show us where we are in our spiritual growth. At what stage are we? Because the people we're going to attract into our life are going to show us very clearly where we're at. It's so funny. I mentioned in my life yesterday, like when I was in my early 20s and, and uh, you know, obviously dating or whatever, there was this man and I, his name was Tom Levine. I still remember his name. Like he was tall and he was sexy and he had a tie and he was, of course, Jewish and that was important to me. And he was so well camped and he asked me out on a date. And I was like, what? He's asking me on a date? Like, I don't deserve him, you know? And I repelled what I really needed, right? Like this guy was a strong, healthy man, but he was up here and I was down here. So I didn't attract, I, I, was, I was actually intimidated by him. I was afraid of him because I felt he was so much better than me that I, I ended up attracting a man, which is where I was at, right? Because I thought he was strong and, 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 and intelligent and confident. But meanwhile, he was in many ways a predatorial man. Like he, he embraced the fact that I was vulnerable and I had no worth and I was afraid and scared. I had a lot of issues when I was, I was like no money, no green card. My parent, my dad was in New York. My mom was in Israel. It was a very frightening part of my life. I was so petrified of Maslow's hierarchy of needs on the bottom that I just latched onto my husband. Like, I'm like, oh, he's strong, he's safe, he's secure. Ah. But like you said, we learned from that. And yeah, part of it, we did learn from that. You're right. That's exactly what happened. Lisa's saying, thanks, beautiful. And you, yep, I've got one of those right now. What do you have one of those right now? Yeah, tell me what you, which, what are you referring to, Lisa? Because we're talking about so many things. So be more specific, Levy, so I can, I can hone in on that. I want to quickly. Um, we had a couple of, um, of comments on the post from this morning, and I want to get your take on it. Um, Rima, Rima, who is from England, she uh, was married, I believe, around 15 years. She's got a 15-year-old son. She's been divorced three years. She's, uh, I think, mid to late 30s, lovely, beautiful uh, woman. Um, she's been working on herself. Um, and she's having a hard time dating, but she mentioned this in the comment and she wanted us to talk about it. I guess I'd like to know when it comes re rebuilding my life, when do I know that I've done it, that it's rebuilt, that I've moved up to in a level in life, crossed the finish line, so to speak, so that I can finally feel and say, I'm ready, ready to attract a healthy relationship. What are your thoughts about that? So we talked about this just before about past assault. We talked about how you know you're ready to move forward when you don't get triggered anymore in the areas where you were triggered with your ex-husband. This is, this is imperative so that when a person crosses your path and let's say that person has the same characteristics as your ex-husband, then you're able to discern and say, mm, not going to work for me. Next. This is not, this is not who I am. You become very conscious and very cognizant of this is what I had to fix. And when a person comes into your life that tramples on that, that new floundering, that new found out foundation of who you are, you're very cognizant. You're very aware and you make a choice and you say no. And don't, don't you think, don't you think that the fact that she said that clearly states that she isn't ready? It, the fact that she, because I know with me, I knew when I, I knew like meaning that comment tells me she hasn't completed her circle of her tikkun, her fixing something's clearly something's still missing. Now I agree with you. She's got facts and evidence. She clearly said she, I think she's got a very healthy co-parenting with her ex. I, I, I felt that that was comfortable with her, but for her, the challenge was with dating men. She, she says, I keep attracting duds. 
I keep attracting losers. She lives far away from London and the guy she attracts, they find out she's two hours from London. They, they're like, don't want to talk to her. And I was thinking about it the other night. I'm like, you know, the right guy will drive two hours to see her. You know, the right guy will schlep four hours, will get on a plane to come see you, girlfriend. Wait a minute. Lisa just also commented, and I want us to talk about that more. She says, she's got a guy that's, oh, that he had, he was way too good for me and I'm not physically attracted. Oh, she has a man right now that he's way too good for her and she's not physically attracted to him. So we got to talk about that one too. Oh, yes. We got to yeah. talk about physical attraction. You know, I like that one. <laughs> right, Ann? Talk about that one. I like that. <laughs> what do you want me to respond to? What am I talking? What am With I talking about? Let's, let's finish about Rima. Like, my thought is this, like, don't you think her stating that, do you think it's because she's just not clear on seeing the signals that she, she is not, completely she not be clear, but the fact that she's stating it knows that she's got to do something, that something has to change. So that's awareness is the first step. So I awareness would, is the first step, the first step. So she's aware. So one of the things that I would, I would suggest she does is just write down on a sheet of paper is what lessons does she think she had to learn from this relationship and just keep those at the forefront? I had to learn how to be stronger. I had to learn how to have a backbone. I had to learn how not to be a yes man, a yes woman. I had to learn. What did you have to learn? And know that when you come into relationship, new relationships, that if that's still part of the equation, if that's still showing up in your life, you still have to dig deeper. You still have to work harder on making this correction, doing this fixing. So I think she's in a good place because awareness is step number one. It's absolutely cool. good point. So important to be aware because again, we do the blaming. So we're pointing, pointing, pointing. But if we're like, wait a minute, why am I feeling this way? Why do I feel like, is it complete? And the fact that she's asking that question clearly shows there's still maybe just a little more tweaks. I, I'm sure she's like 90% there, but that last 10%, is actually the hardest, right? It's the end of that race that you are most maybe impatient, tired, exhausted, or you just want it done, but that's where it's really going to come yeah. together. And then the other thing is, is that, you know, once we have something we have to fix, we're going to be challenged our whole life in that area. Don't think that just because, so for example, with me, just because I grew a backbone, you know, doesn't mean that I'm not going to be continuously challenged in that area because there's a bit of a weakness there. So, it's my tikkun, it's my fixing, it's what I was born to do, part of what I was born to do. So many times, so I go from being challenged from an ex-husband, and then I'm being challenged in uh, a business setting, and then I'm being challenged with a child, and then I'm being challenged. So I have to keep drawing upon what did I do to get out of my marriage, to grow and transform, and I keep going back to that as my new set point, not to below that to younger when when I allow people to step all over me. I go back to the divorce as my set point, the beginning of, hmm, this is what I did to move forward in a healthy way. So let me use those tools. Let me be very mindful and aware of what I did so that I can come back to that when this challenge arises again in my life. And I think the reason why we're able to do that now, I know you and I are very able to do that, but some, you know, most women, especially in this group, they're figuring that out. It's when you own your worth. It's when you know your worth. It's when you're like, wait a minute, this is wrong. And I'm not going to get into the minutia of, you know, whatever the argument may be or the discussion. It's more like, you can't talk to me like that. You can't say that to me. I'm not allowing this way of discussion or, or downplay to me because that was one thing I learned a lot with my husband was that we would get in an argument and the heating and the anger and the yelling and we'd argue over the basketball game or the TV remote or whatever stupidity minutia it was. And then I realized it wasn't even about the remote control or the basketball game. It was how he spoke to me. How you spoke to me. Here's the thing. I don't know. I, I'm going to add something into the mix here. So when women finally understand their worth, that it is their birthright and their destiny to live a life of joy and fulfillment and purpose and passion, then they are open to the possibility 
that they don't have to do this by themselves. This is where the higher power comes in. Because what does that mean by themselves? What do you mean by that? Because if you think you're the only one in this equation of your life, that you're out there alone, that you've got to do it all by yourself, that you're, it's just you, you, and you alone. You've got to get through this divorce yourself. You've got to have, you've got to do the kids yourself. You've got to do the money yourself. We, we take away one of the most important elements of our world, which is to have a relationship with a higher power. Now, I don't, for some people, they might be hearing, oh, I'm not religious, or I don't, I, you know, what are you talking about? I'm talking about the fact that it's your birthright and your destiny to have a good life. It is, and to be happy. It's, it is. You, number one, have to believe that. And then you have to know that the universe has your back that it will bring to you the people that will support you, the financial situations that will support you, the community that will help you raise your children. But if you think you're alone and it's only up to you, then this puts so much pressure on people. You've got to know that you're walking through life with a spiritual partner. You know, Tony Robbins, call, you know, he was talking yesterday. I mentioned it a few times because it's such a cool challenge that he's doing. Faith. He, that's, the word he used for that is faith. Whatever that faith is, whether it's God, higher power, whatever it is, no one's, you know, going that route. But when you have faith, you almost release the how. You, you almost release it because it's it, you're like, I need to do it all now. Just have faith. And just like women have showed up here and we're now beautiful, cute 300 women. And we're like going through all this pain and, and transition. Yeah, there are things you have to do alone, but you still can have a, 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 a support, a, a, a down comforter. We got you. We got you. We're right here. Keep keep doing, keep doing, keep doing. You know, the only way I can make the comparison and make this very real is to more. Through so, what? Through Corona, this experience of oh, corona. through Corona. Sorry, I didn't hear you. And so, what I mean by this is that even in Corona, think about this: our whole our whole world has changed. It's like a divorce. Your whole world changes, and you find yourself at moment zero. What do I do? What does my world look like? How do I pay the bills? How do I take care of my kids? What are my kids going to do for the summer? It's almost the same conversations I had when I got had my divorce. What am I going to do? How am I going to pay my bills? What am I going to do with my kids this summer? How am I going to do this? Right? It's not funny. It's serious, but it's true. It's like the same conversation. It's true. So what are we doing? Well, I know what I'm doing. I have a relationship with my higher power. And I am living in the reality of, I know I'm going to get through this because I have evidence. I've already gotten through a divorce. I've already mm -hmm. gotten through a really horrible time in my life, right? So I have evidence that I can get through this, but I'll get through it even better when I know I have a higher power that has my back. So what does that look like? What does that look like? So in Corona, summer comes. My 16-year-old was supposed to go away to summer camp. What am I going to do? What am I going to do with my kid? I put it out there to the universe. I have a relationship. Universe, I know this is where the understanding and the faith and the belief, you got to shift this paradigm shift from, this is very important, from the world is all about taking selfishness, getting me, hurting me, to the world is a loving, caring, sharing place that wants me to thrive and succeed and is my partner. And it's all about being good and happy and joyful. When you walk through life with that consciousness and the knowledge that the universe has your back in a good way, then everything you need comes. So what started coming is I got these opportunities. So there's a camp here. There's a, an opportunity online. There's a, oh, wow, look at that. And I didn't even have to go look for it. It just dropped into my lap. This is the same. We got to first make that shift from the world hates me. This is world is a terrible place. It's a taking place. It's a violent place to so this world is a beautiful garden to so this world is all about love and abundance and me thriving and succeeding. If you can't make that shift, 
I don't care how many support groups you go to. I don't care how many, I, I just don't care. It doesn't work. The support group, you Revy showing up in your world means that somewhere you are worthy of that support. And how do you get worthy is by making that shift from I live in a terrible world that just wants to kill me and hurt me to I live in a world I connect to the original intention of the creation of this universe, which was to create a garden of Eden for all of humanity to enjoy. And when you live in that- I world, often say it's, uh, it's, it's mother earth, you know, like that the word mother earth should right there tell, tell you that the world, you know, this is part of our progress. This problem is, is temporary, it's not permanent, and it will become our breakthrough and our transformation. Problems come that, the transformation. They're not a death sentence, they're a door. I always say, cute, Lisa says, Revi is a blessing, but hold on. I always say that a, a, a problem creates a door and multiple doors that people would never been able to see and go through unless they had that problem. So wait, so I have somebody, Facebook user, I'm sorry, I can't see your name because we're using StreamYard, but Anna wanted us to talk about this comment as well. She wrote, um, I had a controlling and verbally abusive father, though I would found a thought I'd find a husband completely different, uh, taken 20 years to realize they're the same. <laughs> now figuring out next steps. Isn't that ironic and ironic? What do you think about that, Anne? So our families of origin are just opportunities, places for us to learn, grow, and transform. So there, I'm, I'm not surprised by what you're saying. We, we are, we choose the family that we're going to be born into. I know that sounds wild, right? The, uh, some of the ancient wisdom I follow says that 40 days before conception, we choose mm -hmm. our, our mate who we're going to marry. We choose our parents. We choose it up in heaven land. Why? We choose it because that is the greatest playground and place for us to do our tikkun, to do our fixing. All the opportunities, all the situations are gonna fall into place where our buttons that need to be pushed to move us, to grow and transform into our highest potential is gonna happen in that family of origin. And I love that exactly, the button that needs to be pushed, meaning there has to be a button that's pushed in order to transform because otherwise he ain't doing it. Has to be, unless, 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 you are really a high soul and you've worked on yourself and you've worked on yourself and you've worked on yourself. So instead of being pushed, instead of a button being pushed as the catalyst to get you to move and grow and transform, you choose it yourself. You're, you're so aware of yourself and where you need to grow and transform and what's next. You do it yourself. You push yourself. Without the pain or the problem. The wow. pain or the problem. But most of us, it takes a long while to get there. Theodora from Greece says, Anne, my mom believed that too. We choose our parents. That's what Theodora said. You know, uh, from the beautiful woman who said about her dad. So, you know, I'm very, that's similar to me. My father, you know, was that my parents are from Argentina. I, my parents are Latin, um, although originally, originally from Europe. They went from Europe to Argentina, mar grew up, married, raised there. And then we, we immigrated to Israel and ended up in Hong Kong in the States, whatever. I'm a total mutt. Um, but my father used to tell me flat out that women, I don't even want to say the word, that women were the C word. You can imagine what that stands for. And the, the W word. He told me that flat out. And I, and I would have arguments with him, like, how dare you? Like, I'm your daughter. Like, I'm a woman. He's like, no, not you. I'd be like, wait a minute. But I'm a woman. If you say women are C's and W's, then that A plus B equals C. Revy is a C. No, 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 you're not. And I grew up disputing that and refuting that. Yet, ironically, my limiting belief clearly was that women had no worth, i.e. Revy has no worth. Because that's why I got tumbled on. I was, you know, not just with my husband, but I noticed with work, I noticed with family, I noticed with friends that I attracted people that just took and I constantly gave. And then I was always feeling compromised, always feeling exhausted until one day I said, 
No more. There's a great Arabic word, right? Chalas. You guys need to say that. It's an Arabic slang word. It is a delicious word. It means enough. Stop. Chalas. And that's what a divorce does. And that's what a breakup does. That's what, when you hit the brakes and you take a step back and you're like, what is happening over here? Just like, this is not, this is not okay. And that's the beginning of the transformation. But it's, it's, uh, it's, it's catastrophic for a lot of women. When you make that break and you're like, that's not okay, I'm a woman of worth, and you break up. I mean, Anne, when you left your husband, what happened to you? Like first month that you left him? I cried for, for a, I cried for a whole year. Such grief. Such, such, such grief. Like this was the end of an era. This was the end of my hopes and my dreams. This was even though I chose to leave, the grief was so intense. I found myself crying just like at the craziest times. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't want to it. Even though you choose it, who thought that I would feel so bad? And I was the same way. I'd go to Starbucks and order coffee, sit at the table. I couldn't. Like I would sit there and cry, but people would bring me napkins. <laughs> I couldn't even look at them. I was, but I couldn't stop the crying. You have to be so strong to go through this to know that there is joy on point on the other side because the grief was so hard, and this I was so scared leaving with a three-year-old. How am I going to do this? Wow, that's how, hard. How? How? And again, you know, I was just speaking with a girlfriend this morning about Corona and mm -hmm. how difficult it's been for her. And I'm thinking to myself, you know, she goes, you don't seem so upset. And I'm going, you know what? This is, this is not the first time I've gone through a- This is past the salt. You're passing the salt. Yeah, it's not the first time I've gone through a how. If I can get through the divorce, I can get through Corona and I can get through. So I just, I just, so the hows, all those questions, how am I going to do it? How am I going to do it? It's one day at a time, one second at a time. And I know that the higher power has my back. That whatever I'm going to go through, whatever challenge, whatever how, how I, we're all starting over. A divorce is starting over. I love what that right there, that's key. Because a lot of women think divorce is, I failed, right? It's a goal we have our whole life. And then we get a divorce. And now everyone's looking at us like, oh, you're divorced. I'm sorry. And you're like, don't be sorry. I'm a survivor. Like, I, 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 right. But it's starting over. But now you're wiser and you're smarter and, and you're more self-aware, like you said. Like you said. Self-awareness is step number one. You have to know and be so in tune with yourself. And when I was sitting there and living on one can of tuna a day because I was so, I lost 35 pounds. I didn't eat. I didn't sleep literally for a full year after that divorce. And I chose it because not because of the divorce, because it was the first time in my life where I was totally dependent on me. My child was dependent on me and my new world, how I was going to create this new world was all up to me. Therein lies the biggest paradigm shift that happens to women because that, that's my entire theory and analysis. Because what happens when we're young, we're so afraid of that, counting on myself, feeding myself, paying for my own bills. I can't do it. I don't have worth. I need a man. Every so you latch onto the man. You're doing it from a point of deficiency, a point of lack, a point of weakness, vulnerability. That marriage is doomed. Whether you divorce or you stay with him, I don't give. There's a lot of couples and marriages that I know that the woman is so unhappy, but she can't do it, which I honor. I honor. I have women texting me all the time. Revy, I can't do it. I have, you know, I can't be with, I, I, I said, I get it. I get you know, it. Right? You have to get, and this is, this is not, this is not something you can teach. You have to go through it. That's why Revy and I are very clear when people say, how, give me the steps. The steps are different for everybody. Yes. But, but here's the thing. 
you don't typically move forward or reach out for help unless you're in the pit so deep and you have nothing left to lose. Unfortunately, that's the way it is. Revy and I hope to change that by giving you, it's not like we're going to go down into the pit with you, but we are going to extend our hand. And if you take it, that's what a support system is. We've already been in that pit. We, no one gave me their hand, the universe. I, I had the universe as my partner. I had a few unique friends who helped. I wish I would have had the opportunity you guys have. I wish I would have had more of a support system. But yeah, that's you exactly you no know, end. When I when I broke up with my husband, I was dumbfounded, almost like I, I was alarmed. I'm like, wait a minute, the earth has opened. I'm in quicksand because that's how I actually felt that I was in quicksand and I was gasping for air. And there's, oh, Lisa's giving you lots of kisses and hugs and, and smiley faces. Um, wait, and I'm sure that's Layla, I think. Um, well, I don't know who that is, but somebody says, Khalas, yes, I say it every day. It may not be Layla, maybe somebody else because it says Facebook user. Uh, and somebody else said, finding and realize how, to how toxic I was in my relationship. Now it's figuring out how to change for me and not for him to take me back. That's uh, I, ha I can see now because I'm on your page on my phone. Oh, you can see the comments. Good. Oh, Hernandez, who just I was going to say it's wrong. It sounds like, all right, I knew that was her because I know that's one of the things she's working on. She's realizing that a lot of her issues came from her. How grown up is that, Anne? How grown up is that? That's called being aware. That's called being aware. And when you're in that place and then there's the next and you don't know how to go next, you just ask the universe, show me what's next for my highest good. Show me what's next. I am open to receive what's next, the next step of my transformation for my highest good and potential. Show it to me. I'm taking it on, baby. I'm ready. Give it to me. You know, that's, I wish I could show you this picture. I'm going to take a picture and post it in, in the group. I have this picture, you know, Wall Street in New York, Wall Street, there's the big bronze bull. And around five, six years ago, they added a little girl, a, a cute little girl with a ponytail that she stands right in front of the bull. And, you know, Tony Robbins even talks about it, like it's a warrior stand, like a Wonder Woman stand. Like he even said in, in his challenge yesterday, he goes, when, when you stand up, like this, like you stand up and you put your hands on and he goes, what happens? Your risk level, your toleration of risk goes up and your testosterone goes up, which is strength, right? And he says, your stress level goes down. He just talked about this yesterday. I had a share today in the group and what happens? You're like, I know I'm frigging afraid, but bring it on because to have courage means you, you have to face the fear and you're just going to do it and you're going to be afraid, but you're going to do it anyway. Right, but I'm going to do it anyway. Anyway. That's now that's what it is. And say it with me. Now that's a fearless woman. That's, that's a fearless woman. Yes. Come on, guys. Say it. Now that's a fearless woman. A I'm afraid, woman. but I'm going to do it anyway. anyway. That's, there's no other way out. And that's, that's how we're living right now anyways in Corona. I mean, we live that way anyways. That life. So what's it going to be, ladies? Again, I don't, I'm don't. i not advocating divorce, but I'm saying if you know deep in your gut that this is what it's got to be, then you do it like a lady. A lady with power, with beauty, with perseverance, with faith with certainty that this journey is part of your transformation. Right. It's, not, right. it's not everybody's transformation. It's not part of everybody's transformation. But for some people, it's part of your transformation. Yeah. For me, I know that it's made me the woman that I am today. And I knew my whole life I wanted some form of an impact. I knew my whole life that's what I wanted to do, but I never knew what. Oh, somebody's saying exactly so afraid, but still trying and been more aware of my words and actions. That's amazing. I don't know who said that. Do you see who said that? Veronica. Oh yeah, Veronica. She's she's working hard. She's working hard. And don't be afraid, ladies. Reach out in support groups. Get the help you need to move through this in grace. 
because this is your birthright. This is your due. You're worth it. I have a video on TikTok that's done very well. And I say, a woman has a God-given right. This is not money. It's a God-given right to be happy, to be free, to be independent, to have peace, just the peace, and ultimately to have love, be loved, and give love. These are the, this is the right of the universe, right, Anne? Isn't it? It's more than the right of the universe. It's, it's almost as if, like, I was speaking to someone this morning who li lived a very, um, very, you know, socially upright life, very busy going out, parties, blah, blah, blah. And she said with Corona, it's just rocked her world because they don't do that anymore. Or with the kids 24 seven, she's cooking like she's never cooked before. She's, she's like, it's, it's, it's completely a new normal. That's what a divorce is. It's a new normal. normal. But don't be afraid of it because whether you accept the reality or not, Corona was put on us. We didn't choose Corona, but it's there to show us that we're constantly adapting and creating new normals. Divorce is just another new normal. And if it means like Corona, what this woman was sharing with me this morning, it's made her life much more simple. There's no shopping for clothes. There's no shopping for shoes. There's, there's no, you know, she goes, but I do get my hair done. Okay, she goes, that's important to me. That's she goes, I don't give up. And there's a, she says, but my life has become so simple, stripped down to the barest of essentials. That's what your life looks like after a divorce. Stripped down to the barest of essentials of what's important, what you need to focus on. But there's such a measure of relief in that. Total relief. Totally. Now you know what's really important. Everything else. I don't know. Keeping up with the Joneses, making sure that the, the in-laws were happy, making sure that your ex was happy, pandering to this one, pandering to that one. You don't have to do it anymore. The divorce strips you down to the most basic of essentials, taking care of you and your kids. If you have kids, right? that's it. Whatever, you, whatever way you want it to look, not how by the way, I love, I agree with also that order and taking care of you and then taking care of your kids because, you know, a lot of the women that are married that are in the group or just in general and also all the comments I get on TikTok. I've got one video now, I think 650,000 views in a month and the comments, I can't, I can't, I gave up. I can't even respond, but they're like the kids, the kids, the kids, the kids, the kids. And listen, again, like you said earlier, it's not for me or you and to tell them like we that's not on me because even in the in the group today somebody made a comment what should i do i'm like not on like you have to own that that's that is on you 100 percent. but understand that's just like the airplane the oxygen mask must go on you first in order for your kids to thrive because if you're not fully alive and present and feeling that your life is on purpose, on passion, and that you have, you are complete. How can you really be there for your kids and set the right example? For that? I remember when I got divorced, I went from having it all, the Mercedes, the big house, um, the au pairs the business. And I remember I moved into a small townhouse with my son. Very, you know, wow. Yeah. I just, I just remember, moving into that tiny little mm -hmm. house, just my son and I, and it had to get new carpets and it needed to do a little renovation. Mm -hmm. I remembered I borrowed the money from my mom to do the renovation and I was able to pay her back. Thank God. But the starting over, I remember my little doll house. I remember how free I felt. I remember how, wow, this is all mine. No one's going to tell me what to do, how to do. It was mine. That I was, that I love. <laughs> I just, I still love it. Right? It was mine. And when I was stripped down to the barest of essentials, living a quiet little life. But I do remember that during that time frame, my son was three when we divorced. And I remember hiring once a week a babysitter 
so I could go out and take care of me and do what I needed to do. Beautiful. And people used to say to me, like, I still hear women talk to this day. Well, I can't go. I can't do it. I can't afford it. I can't. That was my priority. Not the Starbucks coffees, not getting my nails done. Not if I, that's, if that's what I had to sacrifice to live on a budget so that I could feel good about me. And what did I do on that one night a week? I went to learn, I went to a course wow. because it made me feel good. And I learned how to take care of me. I remember those days. That's amazing. That is amazing. A lot of women are so afraid of being alone. Like I get the comments even in Facebook, I'm afraid to be alone, or maybe they're, you know, working really hard to date a guy because they don't want to be alone and being lonely and all that. But that's what happens when you're alone. See, when you're alone, you get to really honestly do what you want to do and nurture yourself. Like you went and studied. I went and I, you know, I, that's when I did my yoga and my salsa lessons and a lot of the work that I did, a lot of the reading, but there's a very empowering transition that occurs when you are alone. You know what you get to do? You get to know yourself again. You get to fall in love with yourself again, but you must ask yourself the hard questions. I know many people who get out of their relationships, the first thing they're doing is going out on the town, drugging, sexing, going crazy, going crazy, right? Like <gasps> thinking that that's going to fill them up. Look, do what you got to do, girls, okay? I'm not going to tell you not to do what you got to do. But don't negate the fact that this is the most perfect time for you to look inside and really own what worked and what didn't work and what you're committed to moving forward, just like Corona. We're at a full stop. A divorce puts you at a full stop. Full stop. What are you going to do with it? What are you doing during Corona? People are either on Netflix ignoring distracting waiting for things to be over things are never going back to normal things never go back to the way they were after right. the course you so, have to create a new normal but that takes inner awareness self-reflection support but it's the perfect time to do it so don't lose that opportunity don't. And if you're going to go crazy for a while, rein yourself back in, do it in balance, and do the inner work. So we got a couple more comments I want to highlight. I, I Can you read them, Anne? Because I yeah. just a Facebook user. Yeah. I can't see it. Yeah. It says, um, just give me a second. It's amazing how adaptable. Who said that? Uh, okay. So Lisa Pritt, I have plans to meet a guy this weekend. Let's see if I can break through the fear. Bernadette Zeely. It's amazing how adaptable you are and also getting to trust your own feelings and welcoming every little or big thing that adds to your worth and growth. Beautiful. Uh, Noelia Guterres, hi ladies. I was there, Anne. Who said that? Noella, this is all Noella. Wow. Some people don't want to be alone for fear of finding out who they really are. Wow. Who said that? Noella as well? Love. Does she get the comments of the of the live today? That's the, the big, that's the big comment. What's the trophy? I don't know. Here's a pen. It's for <laughs> I don't have anything in my house. You are a fearless woman. Fearless woman. <laughs> yes. Me. We're afraid. Who am I going to find out? Am I going to find some wink? wimpy little worm who's terrified of her own shadow? Well, if you do find that, ladies hug and love that worm and stroke it and give it love. And maybe I'm a caterpillar and I'm not a worm. Ed. Exactly. Maybe you'll turn into a butterfly. No, we all turn into butterflies. That's the rule here. We go from caterpillar to cocoon to butterfly. That's the transformation we go through. And then ultimately we go. The, the fear and do it anyways. If you don't like who you discover, Change oh, it. Change it. Grow. Beautiful. I, I, just talked, I just did a video now also on TikTok that said, you know, if you don't 
like your reality, that's because you have a certain belief system that reflects your reality. But if you're now self-aware to say, this doesn't work because there's a clash. There's an internal clash going with who you really are to your reality and they don't jive. So that's good. That's being the self-awareness like Rima's self-aware. Something's happening. She knows who she is, but yet her reality is something's missing. And it comes down to belief systems. So if you don't like, if you are alone and you go through that and you don't like who that is, you can change it. But the way to ultimately change it, I always say, your belief systems. Just like my father said those terrible things about women. And even though I said, that's not true, that's incorrect, I disagree with him, that's not what happened. So here's the thing, Ravi. Again, we, we spoke about this at the beginning. The belief system shifts from this world is a terrible place. People are out to hurt me out to get me it's all about selfishness and taking and fakeness and corruption to this world is a beautiful garden where i get to play and grow and transform like a beautiful rose like a butterfly like a worm going into a butterfly and the universe has my back and everything is orchestrated and set up so that i thrive and grow and transform into the best version of me i think a lot of women it's 12:53, so we're going to wrap it up in around seven seven minutes guys if you have any questions or comments furthermore please please put it in there right now so we can start wrapping up but um you know and women who have issues of worth and who have been in toxic relationships or have grown up in a lot of drama and chaos, we have the mindset that we're not meant to thrive and we're not meant to be happy. And yeah, the world is not good for us and they're out to get us and all, you know, all this is happening to us because maybe deep down we deserve it. So I think that's very powerful to recognize that that's just, that's just not how the world works. It's not true. It's, it's a limiting belief that you think that. Not true. It's just what you believe, but it's not true. I always say that. I always say, gosh, I didn't lose you, right? Because my phone rang. Did I lose you, Anne? Are you still there? Okay, good. There you are. Sorry. Um, we as a grown-up can now make our own decisions. We as a grown-up can now assess things in our life and say, that's not true. Because as a grown-up, we have our own mind. When we're little and we see certain things and we feel certain things, we don't really think. And sorry, I went out there. Did I lose Anne? I don't know what happened. My screen went black. I lost Anne. Hopefully she'll come back in again with the same, uh, with the same, that's oh, there. I think she's coming back. Sorry guys. Yay, she's right there. Sorry, Anne, my lovey. My screen went black. I lost everything. I thought the whole thing went, uh, listen, I'm very impressed with us. We're pretty good here. By the way, guys, Anne and I are, not, are in our own homes. We're not even doing this together. How cool is that? I mean, A for technology here, right? Uh, yeah. And it's just getting better and better. This yeah. is my new normal. Technology is my new normal. I, I think, you know, just to kind of wrap things up from what I was saying is that we have a choice to say that's not true. So if we think that the universe is out to get us, we also have a choice to say that the universe wants to help us. We have a choice to say, you know, I don't deserve a good man. But we also have a choice to say, hell yeah, I deserve a great man. And that's a choice that we make as grown-ups. Because when we're little and these belief systems are kind of implanted in us, with us without us being able to think for ourselves, it's, it's kind of, I call it a download. It's a true download into the visual, the think. It goes from what I see to what I think into my belief system. So now I'm recognizing that that's not true. But... I may say, well, you know, men, women are worthy, but if I'm in a with a toxic man, 
clearly my belief system does not state that, but that's why I had conflict and that's why I left him. But how do I fix that? How do I fix that? You know, and sometimes it's not enough to say the universe is, is for me. Sometimes it's just not enough. You have to believe it. You, you have to believe it. I want to ask you, oh, Lisa wants to talk about physical attraction. We'll definitely talk about that, Lisa. No worries. What do you think about that? How do people believe, And How do people believe? The only way they get that belief is through experience. They get that through experience and knowing. Some people have an inner knowing. I never had an inner knowing. My divorce was the beginning of the belief because I had the experience to prove that I could get through this. So that's I, that's key, the, the evidence to prove that what you believe is true. You, you have to seek that evidence, you must seek it. So sometimes it started with blind faith. It was like, without evidence, I believe I could do this. And that was how I got through that first year, just that blind faith because faith. Nothing else worked. The shopping didn't work. The drugging didn't work. The 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 volume didn't work. The the losing thirty five pounds didn't work. The it didn't work. So there had to be something else. So that's when I turned to blind faith. That's excellent. That's amazing. Um, Lisa just wants to talk a little about the physical attraction. And what are your thoughts about her me having oh, to make it? I got to tell you this, okay? And my husband's not listening. Because when I first met my husband, I was not physically attracted to him, okay? I felt he was a nice guy. And because I knew the universe had my back, and because I was in past the salt, because I knew that I was ready for what was next, I thought that if the universe brought him to me, then I need to give him a chance. So I gave him a chance. So it's up to you. What does it harm to go out on a date and see if you can really connect with the person's soul? Let me know. I, I agree with Anne, what she says, you know, we, we have a visceral attraction to sometimes people like us that go through a divorce and have had bad relationships. We're, we, we attract that. There's something about that that turns us on. So the fact that you're not physically attracted to the sky, Lisa, makes me 1000% confident that you must, must go out with him, not once, but several times. Number one, to create evidence that you can be treated with as a woman of worth. Like you said, he's very nice to you. So this is not, this is not about the physical attraction. When we go through a breakup, Lisa, you were the woman that had the Jamaican guy, right? So I believe that was you. So this is not, see, we think dating is about meeting our husband, meeting our soulmate. No, no, not when we go through a breakup or a divorce. Dating after a breakup or divorce, especially when we're married, is about creating new evidence, a new belief system, just like Anne was saying, she didn't have that, but she had faith. Same thing, Lisa, you had a guy, I believe that was you, that he came and boom, he basically used you for getting a green card. Now the good news is that he showed you love and affection, but you felt betrayed. So now you got to work on your muscle and your only agenda, Lisa, your only agenda, nothing more than that is to have this guy treat you like the queen that you are. Absolutely. Period. Absolutely. It's, it's now, it's like a playing field. It's practice. Baseball. Yeah. We're just swinging the bat. And you don't have any agenda attached, no agenda of, Oh my God, this is going to be the next one. This is going to be the next one. And the thing about physical traction is that when the physical attraction is not there to cloud the judgment, you can really get to know a person and you can monitor your reactions better because it's not being fueled by lust. By the way, I looked up, you know, I was so curious about that physical attraction. So there's something we emit called pheromones. I believe it's pH, pH. pheromones. 
So these molecules apparently come around our neck and head when we are physically attracted to somebody. And guess why it comes out? Pheromones are God's and universe's way of telling you that you this guy's a good partner to have children with. That's what pheromones are. Because when you physically connect with that, that means the DNA is good to have children. So girlfriend, you're not having kids with this guy. <laughs> That's fun. So you don't have to, the, like Anne said, the physical attraction almost clouds the objective analysis of if this guy's going to treat you as a woman of worth. That He has to earn that. He, he, has, you, to he has to earn it. Queen and put you on a pedestal. I was so, I'm sorry, Emma, what were you going to say, honey? I'm so, I apologize. You, you demand it with your actions. You demand it. You don't have to you say it with words, but you demand you it. Show words. up as worth as that woman warrior. You show up like that. And if a guy's going to honor and respect that, he's going to behave that way. So good. Um, oh, she wrote, thank God I'm 51. That's right, honey. So don't worry about the physical attraction. It's irrelevant. And, and trust me, if you meet such a great man, what you're going to fall in love is, is with his soul. And that's much, that's a much better love affair. That's, that's a love affair. When you fall in love with a man's soul and not because the pheromones and those molecules are flying all around. And apparently they're really high when you're ovulating. And I read all about it because I, I, I also would meet men. I'm like, it's just not there. And they were really good men. And I like kind of blew them off. And other men, it was all physical. And then we'd have sex. And then I wouldn't hear from him again. I'm like, what just happened to me? You know. So it was all a part of learning process. Who wrote, I was told I needed to date with purpose to not attract the duds and the time wasters. Is that Rima? Rima Saber. Because she said duds. First of all, who told you that? No one gets to tell you anything, girlfriend. The only one that tells you anything is yourself. What do you think of that over a comment, Anne? Well, what does that mean to date with purpose? What does that mean? It's, it's already so exhausting. I read that, Anne, and I'm tired. I, I, I don't understand that. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's, what does that mean, Rima? It's it's a a lot I can see the chat. But date with purpose? The only purpose to date with is is to have fun have fun and to a be with a person who treats you as a queen and shares common to find out if you share common values ethics goals if you could potentially build a life together i i don't know i mean just go oh, she wrote to be picky i think that's her right is that what rima wrote with purpose be picky. Be picky? of course you'd be picky but you be picky about the right things. You be picky. Is this man someone that I, that is is willing to transform and grow? Is this a humble man? Is this a man that has integrity? Is this a man that's about healing the world? Is about sharing? It's about compassion. Of course, you be picky about those things. You don't be picky about whether he's carrying an extra ten pounds or he's five foot twelve, five foot ten, or or five foot eight. Or whether he can get by financially or he's a billionaire. Okay, basics. But you care about the things that really matter that will carry you long term. That's what you care about. She further wrote, and not to go on any dates for the sake of it. So I have my own thoughts on, on dating. So, you know, remember one thing also with Anne. When Anne broke up with her husband, she had a three-year-old. See, it also depends where we are in our space of age and children. So if I know if I had little kids, like in single digits, I'm sure, I mean, I can't say because that didn't happen to me. My boys were 13 and 16 when I left my husband, but I'm, I'm pretty sure I would have probably wanted a man to either have more children with. I know, and you had another baby, right? You had a second child. I, I know that would have been important for me too. I always personally wanted two kids. Um, and I probably would have wanted a, a male figure because my, my son was, my child was only three. So you Rima for you specifically your child is 15 so you are still young enough to certainly have more kids if you want to but you also don't have to it's a choice that you make but here's the deal first my thoughts first and foremost who's ever telling you from what I recall correctly all your friends are married so they don't get to give you advice <laughs> married friends are not allowed to give advice to divorced women sorry that's that's my rule number one Number two, 
you go on dates for the sake of it. She wrote there, you don't go on dates with, that is absolutely incorrect. The more dates you go on, the more dates you go on, the more you learn what you want. And more importantly, what you don't want. Now, if you're, you're saying you keep attracting the duds and the time wasters, Rima, that's on you. That's on you, girlfriend. If you're attracting duds and time wasters, why? You have to then assess your vetting. I think, oh, it's, oh, wow, we've already gone live one hour, nine minutes. Can you believe that, Anne? We've been on the call for so long. So you have to assess your vetting of what you're doing. But my attitude is, like I talk about, be open-minded. Now, maybe with you, Rima, maybe you're too, maybe you're too open. Like you said to me, I think you said 26 to, to 50 or 55, I think it was. So maybe what you need to do is you need to narrow your, your funnel. But what if you only like one, Lisa says? What if you only like one? Be open-minded. Stop making all these rules for yourself. The, the, more playful, the more playful you get in this process, the less needy you are. See, when you're needy for a man, you're going to repel a good man. So you're creating a lot of rules. I have to be picky. I have to do it on dating. I need to like him. There needs to be the pheromones. That's too much. Be free. Be fearless. Go out to just meet interesting people. Talk about the world. Like you're going to yoga. Look yeah. at it okay. with no, not so much agenda attached to it. Yeah, no agenda. And yeah, there's going to be guys you like, guys that like you, you don't like them. Who? It's all good. You know, I think that what happens, there's so much pressure. Look, guys, we've been married, so we know the real deal. And we have kids. So be, and most of us do in this group. There are some women, of course, that don't. But check mark, check mark. So release this, this pressure, this pressure to meet the one and just meet many. <laughs> Don't meet one, meet many, be busy. Yes, 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 yes. Let them chase you, let them compliment you. Let them ask you on dates. You say, no, I'm busy, no, I can't. So that that's, and we're gonna talk more about dating and relationships tomorrow because that was the, you know, and when I, when I first dated, when I broke up with my husband, I was like, I have to find a man, I have to get married. I have to find a man, I have to get married. And in the first three months, it was like a bloodbath for me. And then I had a total mind shift and I changed my entire perspective and attitude. And as a recruiter by profession, I decided to vet and I just decided also to be open-minded. I'm talking open-minded. I met such interesting men from Mexico city, from Canada, from Europe, you know, locally, you know, ethnic, you know, I had Hispanic, uh, you know, I, 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 I just enjoyed the freedom of meeting men from all walks of life. And then when the right man came, it's going to click and you're going to know when that happens. You, you will know. So, um, and how long have you been married now to your second husband? Mm, I think it's 19 years. How did, how did you guys meet you and your hubby, your second hubby? Uh, we met at a synagogue. Wow. Yeah, we met at a synagogue. Look at that, a place of worship. Yeah, a, a, a mutual, a mutual interest. And um, actually, I, I, how we met was because he speaks French and I speak French, and I was speaking French to a friend of his, and he said the first thing he heard was my voice speaking French, and he just took around, took one look at me, and said that was it. He knew. Funny, right? That's a great story. Yeah. So See, and you didn't go to the synagogue like thinking I'm gonna meet a guy. You you released like there was no pressure on that. You were going to to, to for your services and to Yeah, and I was I that's was the release space. It was so fresh after my divorce. It was like I had going through my mind, I don't ever want to meet another man. I just want to raise my child. I was going back to school. I said, if I never marry again and never have another kid, I'm happy. I have my kid. I have my career. If this is what I'm supposed to have, I'm okay with it. I was okay. This, this is key, Anne. 
that's an empowered, fearless woman because you were now completely latched onto yourself and you weren't needy for a man. No. You sure you would want a man, but you didn't, you weren't even interested. Wasn't even interested. And that was the funniest thing is he came after me like gangbusters. Because and you were busy. I, I was like, I, I, I didn't know what to do. Cause like I had, I had been married since I was 21 for 13 years. I felt like I was a baby. I don't even think I ever really dated before I got married. Right. But, but the point was, is I had a life. I had a path. I had my child. I was pretty, that was it. He, he came number one and I was back in school, bettering myself, advancing my career. And and I was just gonna, I was just total in surrender. Whatever the universe wants for me at this point, I know what my priorities are. My life is stripped to its bare essentials, myself, mothering, career. And I was like, if it's not gonna get better than this, it's okay. It's okay. And it's not gonna like you were so good where you were at that you had gratitude for that without a man in the mix. Yeah, I because I really, what I teach is really, um, in order to attract your ultimate level soulmate, because that's where I was. I was only going to get into a relationship with a soulmate on a different level, on, on a level that was for my highest good and potential. potential. I, I wasn't settling at any time. You were clear in that. You were clear. I was clear in that. Right. Yeah. You didn't have that clarity with the first husband. No, I didn't know. I didn't know anything with the first husband. Right. Maybe. Right. So I was so clear on that that I knew that to get into another relationship, um, that this person would be an addition to my life, not my life. Right. Because I liked my life that I had created, that I had fought for, like literally fought for that life, for that stability. Um, and that if I was going to have another person in my life, that it was going to be he has his life, I have my life, and together we have a life. But he was never going to tell me how to live that life, what to do with that life, um, that was mine. I had created that from blood. So if that person can respect and honor the life that I created, then that was a sign that there was a possibility for a relationship. Right. And he wasn't your whole circle. He just would make a slice in he your circle. He was a element of your life, but he's not your whole life. He's not my whole world. Chiro Rima, um, I think you nailed it on the head and it happens when you least expect it. I'm aware I'm expecting it, so I'm repelling it. I, I don't even think that you're expecting it. I think that you're needy for it. And there's a difference. I want you to expect it because you want to be open to it. You have to be open. But here's the thing, Rima. There's nothing more sexy and attractive to a man than a fearless woman. It's very sexy. It is so sexy. It's such a turn on because... Even though the man is programmed to be the alpha, there's nothing more sexy than knowing that he can let down his guard, knowing that his woman will have his back in times of need. A man wants that strength more than anything. He might not admit it. Right. He might never even think about it or admit it to himself. But a fearless woman who knows her worth is sexy. Right. I, I, I really, right. It's, a, it's an aphrodisiac. It is. There's not men love empowered, strong women. We're not obnoxious. We're not disgusting. But this is not about that. But this is about saying yes. And it's also about saying no. So, you know, there's something going on here. If you're attracting those duds, that's going to be on you. I'm, I'm putting that on you. You're putting it on them. I don't agree. I went out with a guy who lived in Orlando. I'm in Boca. He used to drive every weekend, three hours on a Friday night, and then he would leave on Sunday to come and see me. So I don't buy it. And you're a hot mama. She's gorgeous. They're all beautiful women. So I'm not buying it. There's something else going on that's happening to him. And it's okay because you're in the right place. We're going to just from today, Rima, I think that you're already realizing, you know, 
that you're needy in some ways, which is why you might be repelling it. You're already going into the dating world saying, there's only duds, there's only losers. No guy from London will want to come and meet me. I live in this town and all my friends are married and push, 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 push. Like, I, why even try? You've already given up. So the whole yeah, thing Remember, is, words have power. Yeah. And I thought saying that no one will do this and no one, no one, no, as opposed to I'm worthy. The right person will cross. Will show up. The right guy will do it for you. They'll and fly. I spoke to a woman who told me that the guy would fly from Canada to go see her. Like they fly countries. So I don't agree with you. I my, don't agree with you. My current husband lived an hour drive away from me, and mm -hmm. I had a three-year-old. And I'm telling you, he came to me. And she had, he didn't, oh, he had kids too, right? He also had kids from the, so that there's evidence for you right there, Rima, that what you're thinking, it's, it's not true. It's a limiting belief you have because I have evidence to prove contrary and so does Anne. And I'm sure there's plenty of other women. So um, it's, it's just changing the mindset and changing the energy, the energy that you're putting into it. So Lisa just quickly wants to say one thing. Oh, um, uh, Lisa said, I don't want to go out with many people, but I want a partner. Okay, you don't have to go out with many people. That's fine, and you can. You should want a partner. I, I am. I, I'm with you on that, right? I mean, it makes sense. If you don't want to go out with a lot of people, then don't. You have to honor what you want. Just be a fearless woman. Just be a woman yeah. who knows her worth, who knows what's important, the values, the ex ethics, the morals. Know what is non-negotiable. Because that's what's going to bring to you, attract to you, the right person. Know what you do want, not what you don't want. Right. Focus on what you do want, not on what you don't want. Remember that. That's the power of the word. Focus yeah. on what you want. So yeah. it's I want a loving guy. I want a caring guy. I want an empathetic guy. I want a strong guy. I want a confident guy. Not, I don't want a guy who's needy. I don't want a guy who's going to depend on me. For who's a dud or a loser. I don't want a loser. I don't want to dud. I don't want to waste my time. Right. Because when you focus on that, that's what you attract. So start changing your words mm -hmm. and maybe you'll change your reality. That's exactly it. Don't focus on I can't or I don't, but what do I want? What What is important for me? What What do I, what do I want in my life? Okay, Rabbi, I'm getting hungry. You're good. So just quickly, Lisa says that's okay then about she doesn't want to go out with many people. So Lisa, I'd be curious, not for today because we went way over, but this was amazing. But I would just be curious as to why you don't. There's something, there's a trigger in you that a minute you start, because again, going out with a guy is not having sex. Going out with a guy is having a cup of coffee with him going to do miniature golf, uh, I don't know, going to the bookstore. So I'm not sure what the fear is. Um, and if you want a partner, you know, it's statistics. If you're only dating one guy every three months, it's, it's, it might take you much longer than if you date one guy a week. Like, you know, I, I went out with, I would go out like one guy every two weeks was my date. I had like two guys a month that I dated. So, and then it was one date and then I would be yay or nay. Anyway, and what's your one takeaway for today? Let's wrap things up. What's the one takeaway you want to share? For today is to remember the goal is to be a fearless woman, to be a woman who knows her worth, who knows what's important to her, who expresses it in positive thought and positive words and to, to not have an agenda the only agenda is to be the best you can be, to focus on you, not focusing on a guy. Love that. And even Lisa said right now, she's she's afraid of rejection. So, you know, we'll talk about that maybe more tomorrow, next week, et cetera. But um, when you focus on yourself, just like what Anne said, you're not focusing on him. So if a guy doesn't want you, that's not on you. Yeah. That's on him. Uh, the the faster they they if you want to use that word I don't like using that word because it's not true it's just not a match it's not a match we're grown ups here it's not a match there's guys you want you you're not seeing a guy right now you're not physically attracted to what happens if you don't like him is he going to be afraid that you rejected him <laughs> it's like it works both ways so we got to have courage and we have to have faith and you 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 have to do it even with fear so 
We'll talk about that more. Guys, if you want to reach out to Anne, I, I highlighted her name. You can click on it. You can follow her on the on the post from today. Uh, she's also part of the group, so you can find her in the members. Feel free to reach out to her, connect with her. She has her own face. What's your Facebook page called, Anne? Anne Shoshana Dector. Perfect. So, and she can post it on there. You guys are more than welcome. I encourage you to follow her. She has a lot of enlightenment, spiritual, energetic, higher power thoughts and concepts that I, I greatly am fascinated with and, 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 and do believe is very important for part of our transformation to be a fearless woman. So thanks for joining guys. Take good care. An hour and a half, man, one hour and 24 minutes. How did you do that? Anne? how did that happen? Because we're doing what we love. We're doing what we love. That's so true. You're All right, guys, take good care guys. Thanks. Anne. thanks. Thanks. Anne. And broadcast.